right.media. Live from Lucille's Roadhouse, it's the Swasu Coaches Show. Brought to you by ASAP Energy, Anadarko Dozer and Trucking, PSO, Pioneer Cellular, Jet Distributing, CJ Southwest Tire, Butcher's Wine and Spirits, McDonald's of Weatherford, Clinton, and Elk City, Bank First, CK Energy, More Than Medicine, A Plus Roofing, and Weatherford Regional Hospital. Now let's head out to Lucille's with Stephen McTeer. Welcome into the Swasu Coaches Show here at Lucille's Roadhouse. It is Wednesday night. We'll talk some football. We'll talk a little athletic training as well. And we'll talk Swasu soccer over the next hour or so. We begin, as always, though, with head football coach Chip Pobolish. Bulldogs coming off a loss to Henderson State this past weekend. Coach, thanks for coming out, as always. Appreciate you having me, as always. You know, Henderson State... Um, Slow start again. You, you said it after the game. You're not going to win many games spotting teams 28 points, and that's that's absolutely right. Is there any when, when you went back and watched the tape and you went back and you kind of reflected on the game, is there any rhyme or reason for that? Was it a bad warm-up? Was it just not ready to play? Anything that you can put your finger on? No, it's just, you know, we had we had some kids do some things they shouldn't have been doing. Um, you know, two, two of those first, those first two touchdowns were miscommunications. Um, one, they, they called the strength call wrong. Uh, we slanted the wrong way and two open gaps, and, you know, that's what happens. Another one that miscommunicated the coverage, and one guy thought it was zone, one guy thought it was man. We had a guy go free. Uh, I was, you know, that stuff is fixable. I was, I was disappointed with the way we started on offense. Um, you know, you don't, you know, I don't know if everybody realizes it, but when you, you go three and out, you put your defense in a, in a tough situation. It makes it difficult. We got we got to do a better job putting drives together. And uh, you know, that being said, we're going against probably one of the best defenses in the conference this weekend. You know, one thing that we had talked about as well after the game, and we said this on the broadcast, and you said it as well, was second half was seven to seven. As as much as the first half was ugly, seven seven in the second half is obviously a positive thing. What are some other positives that when you watch the film back you saw? Well, you know, we we went at halftime, and you know, I, I'm a very honest person. I, I tell them exactly what I'm thinking. I said, guys, we're we're not getting whipped at any spot. We're not getting out coached. We're not getting out schemed. Um, we're we're just not executing at a very high level. And I said we need to come out in the second half and execute, do what you coach to do, and you know, and, and that's what happens when when we when we execute. We, you know, we can compete with anybody. And when we don't, it really really shows. Um, you know, we're not a good enough football team to not execute, and not do things. And our margin of error is very small, um, but that's a challenge that we accept and you know look forward to that challenge every week. Um, you know, and, and really, I thought we missed a touchdown late. Probably could have scored another touchdown rate. We had Rayburn wide open in the end zone, just overthrew him a little bit. So, you know, I told him for, second half's 14-7, but again, you spot the team 28 points. You're not going to win very many football games. Practice this week, uh, you know, and we'll talk about Harding here in a second, but practice this week, how's it been? Are the guys, you know, keeping their spirits up despite the results of the last few weeks? Uh, absolutely. And, and that's one thing, a positive from the game last week, too, is our kids played hard. They played hard. From the, I know we got down early, but it wasn't because we weren't playing hard. They played hard the whole game. They practiced hard. They practiced hard this week. They're frustrated. Um, they're extremely frustrated, and they should be. Um, you know, and I tell them before a breakthrough happens, there's frustration, and you could push through it or give up. And right now we're pushing, and we're going to keep on pushing. I know Harding this week, obviously, uh, that's a team steeped in as much tradition as you'll find in this part of the country in Division II. Uh, you know what they're going to do. There's no secret about it. They're going to run the triple option, and they're going to do it until somebody stops them, and very few are able to do that. What's it like preparing for that? You know, it, you know, we, we've talked about preparing for different things, but is this one where you where you focus on different things to to prepare for that? Well, you know, their, their offense presents unique challenges, and you know, you do have to focus on that, but you're still focusing on yourself and, and what you need to do to have success. Um, you know, you have to fit everything right. Their their offense depends on you not doing something correct, and and you said they're going to do it till they stop it. Well, they're going to keep doing it. Yeah, gonna, even if they stop it, they're going to keep doing it. Um, so, you know, you have to focus on yourself. You have to be very disciplined, um, you know, and, and that I think I told the offense, this is probably one of the more complex defenses we've seen all year and will see all year. I mean, they're, they're, they're good. They're well coached. They adjust well. They don't show the same things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for the challenge. I told the kids that today, you know, football on the defense side of the ball, we're going to have to be extremely physical. You know, if we, we get in there soft, they're going to they're gonna run all over us. And it's a tremendous challenge on offense. And, that, man, that's that's what we play for. It's what we practice for is to go against teams like this. What makes it so hard, stopping that triple option? Why do people all over the place just have trouble with it? I think, you know, the one thing right now is because it, nobody else is doing it. So, you know, this is a week where you're going from, you know, defending zones and gap schemes to, to the triple option. So that's probably the, the most thing. It's, it's just unique right now. 
Um, the other thing is th they're very good at it. You know, they, they, you, know you can be a jack of all trades or master of none. Well, they're a master of their offense, and you know, and, and they do it very well. And they they've done it well for years. They've done it well with different kids. You know, different types of players. And you know, hats off to them. As you go into this week, and I, I know I asked you if you could put a finger on why you guys started slow on Saturday. It, maybe it'd make life easier if you could, because then there might be something to fix. How do you fix that coming into this game? Because the two previous Arkansas trips were kind of like this last week where you started slow. Is there a fix to it that you can you know, definitively look at? I mean, there's there's different things you try, different approaches you try. You know, the, the good thing about this week is we have fall break. So tomorrow we're basically going to spend all day with the kids. I mean, we'll practice in the morning, meetings in the afternoon, lift in the afternoon, walk through, and just really spend time together. And, and you know, that that's one thing that we're hoping. And then we're going to do something different on, on Friday, again, because of fall break. We're going to do a little walkthrough before we get on the bus and, you know, try to just, like you said, just try to do things to get us start off a little bit faster and, and execute a little higher level at the beginning of the game. We're going to talk to Coach Boog and we'll talk to Alex Ramirez as well. But, uh, you know, talk about them a little bit and, and what they've meant to, you know, I get in 2019, it's all about, you know, the five wide outs and the skill guys. But but, the, but those fullbacks and those tight ends are obviously a huge part. Talk about them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and I, I want to say this, but, you know, l last week when you said, you know, the second half was 7-7, seven, seven, I don't think you'll find a player that played better or harder than Alex Ramirez in that second half. I mean, he played his tail off. Uh, he executed at a high level. I mean, you can tell the things that we were talking about at halftime, it, it was important to him to come out and show what, what he had and what he could give to this football team. Um, and, man, you, you, you get a, a team of Alex Ramirez and you win a bunch of games. I'm really proud of him and, and the way he responded last week. And he's got some younger guys at his position now that he's, he's, he's coaching up. And, um, you know, I'm proud of him for that fact, too, because, you know, we lost Phil, so we got to bring some other tight ends, move some guys around. And um, Alex has done a good job transitioning those guys. Moving guys around, boy, that's not new for you this year. That's, that's <laughs> happened all over the place. Yep. Um, and I guess health. I mean, we're talking to Edwin Detwiler. He could give us an, an update too. But uh, uh, how's the health of the team going forward? Uh, it's it's okay. You know, we, we lost Phil. Um, we lost Bowie. Bowie broke a couple ribs. Um, so he'll be out for a couple weeks. And, you know, that, that, Bowie's a big, big asset to us on defense. So I said asset. Um, he's a big asset to us on defense. Um, so I'm excited about, you know, not excited, but you know, we're worried about him trying to get him back as soon as we can. Going forward this week, if, if, if you could pick one thing that you guys excel at on Saturday to win the game, what would it be? Uh, Tyler Marr's going to have to play well, and he, and he will. Um, and we we'll have to run the football and stop the run on defense. I mean, it's the same every week. You stop the run, and you're able to run the football. You can do a lot of things. Hey, Coach Chet Pobolish with us here on the Coach's Show. Bulldogs in Searcy, Arkansas, taking on Harding, a very good team. Should be a good game on Saturday afternoon. Coach, as always, appreciate you coming Thank out. You, appreciate you. We'll come back after this break to Lucille's Hills Roadhouse and the Swasu Coaches Show. ASAP General Stores have seven Western Oklahoma locations conveniently located in Weatherford, Clinton, Henson, and Thomas. At ASAP General Stores, you will always find a clean and friendly atmosphere. Hello. Fresh, hot food. Delicious. As well as gas and diesel. Use your kickback card and get rewarded for all your purchases from a store you can trust. ASAP General Stores. Stop by any of the seven Western Oklahoma locations in Weatherford, Clinton, Henson, and Thomas. So, what are you waiting for? Get there ASAP. Here's Jay and Angie Wyatt, owners of Anadarko Dozer and Trucking. We think the cream of the crop is, is all that we are. It shows not only our safety records, the reports we get from the customers. Even if we don't have a position to fill, if the right applicant walks in the door, we will take the time, we will visit with them, and, and it may be a situation where we weren't looking for that person, but when they walked in the door, you know, they're the right person for us. Apply now at Anadarko Dozer and Trucking on South Main in Elk City or in Hinton, three miles south on 281. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, keeping your energy prices steady and affordable. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, creating jobs and more money for communities and schools. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. Coors Light is cold pack. for peak refreshment. The world's most refreshing beer, Coors Light. When was the last time you looked at your cellular bill? 
No, I mean really looked at your cellular bill. Pioneer has introduced new plans that will help you find the savings on cellular service so you don't pay more than you should. How about this? Pioneer's new family plans offer unbeatable prices on the area's most reliable cellular network. For example, now get three lines with 20 gigabytes of data for just $90 per month. Wow. Stop by a Pioneer store or call us at 1-800-641-2732 to find the savings. Back here on the Swasu Coaches Show on this Wednesday evening at Lucille's Roadhouse here in Weatherford. We've got Coach Bogard with us. He's the tight end of the fullbacks coach. Coach, glad to have you. Thanks yeah, for coming. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You know, uh, we talk about, about execution and everything like that, and obviously, uh, you know, the tight ends and fullbacks are such a huge part of running the ball, and mm -hmm. that's been a main focus, I know, for you guys yep. the last few weeks is improving that aspect. Are you pleased with, with the progress that's being made? I know there's still a long way to go, but over the last few weeks with that focus, uh, how how much are you proud of your guys for improving? Yeah, I think my guys have done a really good job um, since the beginning of the season, really, just making sure they're doing their job. And um, it helps when you have a senior in Alex Ramirez who is always consistent. Like, I can tell him a play. And he's going to know it. He's going to do a great job at it. Um, and he does a good job of setting the tone for the rest of my guys, you know, because Alex is a senior and then all, literally everyone else in my group is a redshirt freshman. And he does a really good job of leading those guys and kind of setting the tone and this is how we're going to do things and everybody else kind of falls in line. So I'm, I'm really lucky to have those guys. Obviously, you know, I just asked Coach this too. 2019, it's about, you know, the big play wide receivers and it's about, you know, the, the, the shifty running backs. But, you know, with your guys, how important is it for a team to be balanced to have – tight ends that are not only good pass catchers but good blockers and the same goes for fullbacks yeah I think um for us you know I I think I coach them a little different than anybody else maybe would in that we're gonna be run blockers first you know if if Alex catches a pass or Chris gets one or AJ this week if they get a pass that's just extra but on top of everything we want to be dominant run blockers um you know everything coach Wareheim does I buy into and you know he's helped me a lot but that's the mindset that we want to have from the beginning. So we're going to be dominant run blockers. We're going to be able to get in people's faces. We're going to be physical. We're going to play, you know, tight end and fullback differently than a lot of people do. Where a lot of people, I think a lot of tight ends and fullbacks are soft now, to be, you know, frank. And that's something that we try to get away from and be really physical and be really tough. And it's something that I preach every single day is we're going to be the nastiest dudes on the field when we walk on. So you got another ranked game this week. And I think probably the same would go for the Washita game. I, I'm not sure there's a lot of people outside the program that think that you guys have that great mm -hmm. of a chance with, with what they do and how good they've always been. Do you guys kind of relish that chance where everyone kind of thinks like, oh, man, there's probably not going to stick with them on the road. You got you guys kind of enjoy that challenge? Yeah, I mean, it, if, if it's it's what coach always says right it's all we're, we're all we got we all need and you know if if the 65 guys on the bus believe then it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks truly because we know that we haven't played up to our expectations mm -hmm. last few weeks but if we play up to our expectations we can play with anyone and you know I truly believe that I know every coach in the whole building believes that. I know every player believes that so you know if we can we can put one together I think you know people are going to be happy to see what we put on the field. I know that, you know, Coach said in Harding, one of the more complex defenses you guys will face this season. Mm -hmm. What makes them so difficult to play against? Man, they just, they play hard and they play in their gaps. Um, you know, I think, you know, the, the whole program, right, they run the triple option. They, they do the things that they do because they want to be disciplined, and that carries over everything. Special teams, offense, defense, you walk, they're, they're going to be disciplined and they're going to be in their gaps. And then they're going to be really physical. So kind of going back to what we were just talking about is, you know, we got to match that intensity and surpass it, and then we got to be sharp in what we're doing, and we can't get off our tracks. We can't, you know, be one inch off in, when we're following our steps on our J block, things like that. So, you know, as you've gone through the last few weeks, the results obviously haven't been what you want. And, you know, Coach kind of talked about this. Football season is obviously a grind. I mean, it's week in and week out, and when things aren't going your way, it's even more of a grind. Mm -hmm. What's what's the attitude around the team despite those results the last few weeks? Yeah, I think you can look at it one of two ways, right? You can say, oh, man, we're grinding out here. We have to work hard. We have to do all this stuff. Or you can say, man, we get to play college football. And, you yeah. know, not – you know, there's hundreds of thousands of people that would like to be in our in our spot, and that's something I try to tell my guys every day is, you know, not everybody gets to do this, so we might as well have a great attitude. We might as well have fun doing it, you know. You know, I think we have a lot of fun in my room. We get stuff done because not everyone gets this opportunity to play college football. And, you know, we obviously want to win. You know, that's that's why we do it. But regardless, we're going to fight to the end. We're going to play our butts off. And, you know, we're going to do everything we can to enjoy ourselves because not everybody does get to do this. 
I'm going to talk to Alex here in a second, but having him as, as a senior, you know, there's a lot of coaches that seemingly would kill to have a guy like mm -hmm. that uh, in their group. What's he meant to not only your position group, but also to this team? You know, I think Alex is a great leader, and he's that's what he's grown at the most this year. Um, is you know he's been a captain a couple times because he's he's kind of become the leader of the offense with Corey Gans and Tyler and um, you know it it's nice for me because as a young coach you know especially I remember last semester it helped me a lot because he knew so much that you know I was able to talk to him get ideas off him and you know he's helped me a lot and he makes my job easier because I, I tell him you know we're running zone you got to block it this way and he'll get it done and then he leads the way for everybody else. Coach John Bogard with us here, tight ends and fullbacks coach for the Swansu Bulldogs as they get ready to take on Harding. Coach, we'll see you in Searcy. Yep. Thanks for coming on. Yep. Thank you. We'll take another break. We'll come back and we'll talk a little head athletic trainer. He is now the assistant athletic director, so we have to refer to him by the correct title. We'll have Edwin Detwiler when we come back on the Swansu Coaches Show. Need your oil and filter changed? Take your vehicle to CJ Southwest Tire in Weatherford. There is no appointment needed. Bring your car, truck, or diesel in today. You can wait in the comfort of their smoke-free lounge while experienced technicians change your oil and filter on your vehicle. CJ Southwest Tire on the corner of Maine and Kansas and Weatherford. Your Bridgestone and Firestone dealer. CJ Southwest Tire. See them on Facebook and at cjsouthwesttire.com. Hey, Bill, hey. Gary. Catch the game last night? Of course. Yeah, and that diving one-handed one -handed catch. catch. So impressive. <laughs> if you think that's impressive, you should see my azaleas. Wait, did you just bring up flowers during a football conversation? <clears throat> McRib is back. It's back? Sweet, the McRib is back. It sure is. More saucy goodness to love. From your host, the Phillips family, at McDonald's in Weatherford, Clinton, and South Main in Elk City. When it's time to unwind, pick up a bottle of your favorite stuff at Butcher's Wine and Spirits in Weatherford. All the top brands at the absolute best price. From whiskey, bourbon, gin, and scotch to your favorite craft, import, or domestic beer, Butcher's has you covered. And when it comes to wine, Butcher's has the best selection in town. And don't forget to check out their sale rack with deep discounts. Butcher's Wine and Spirits on Main in Weatherford. Bank First is loyal to the same spirit of industry and ingenuity seen across decades of life in Weatherford. Still a proud stop on Route 66, the vibrant modern reality has the loyalty of local people who run this Bank First, where a rising powerhouse of wind energy joins a renewable source of brain power at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. Family and CK Energy Electric Cooperative, it's the ideal partnership. CK Energy makes every customer an owner of the business. Unlike other electric utilities, CK Energy exists to make sure your needs are always met, not to make a profit. We are locally owned and operated, and we are always there with you, reinvesting in your community. That's why in an electric co-op, the people have the power. Owned by our communities, committed to our members. CK is your energy. Welcome back to Lucille's Roadhouse here on this Wednesday evening. We've got senior tight end Alex Ramirez here with us. Alex, thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you having me. Uh, senior year, I know that uh, every every freshman playing college athletics, you know, thinks it's never going to end. But <laughs> but you know, here you are. Uh, this season, have you tried to have you tried to slow down and soak it all in a little bit more than maybe you did when you know freshman year, sophomore year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's it's sad it's coming to an end, but uh, you got to got to got to soak it all in now. Uh, I tell the young guys all the time happens real fast I feel like just yesterday I was a freshman but it's fifth year senior time when you go back to the to those early days um, in Weatherford and at Swasu you know in your game what's the biggest improvement that you think that you've made over those four now going into the fifth year well uh run game I think uh, I wasn't a real good run blocker last year uh, I've got a little little heavier this year I think it helped a lot um, I think I was more of a receiving tight end but uh, this offense really isn't a receiving tight end kind of offense so I kind of took in the run block and and helped out. I think Coach Bogart helped a lot though he brings that O-line experience to us and uh, helped up our steps and stuff so I enjoy run blocking now. You know we, we talk about the run game and that's been the focus and, and improving that every week you know it, do you feel like you guys have improved at least step by step over the last few weeks in that aspect? Uh, yeah I think so I think the O-line they, they've stepped up a little bit uh, I think last week we ran a little little uh, or we ran a lot of RPOs and I think Tyler struggled a little bit uh, 
handing the ball off sometimes, but if you watch it on film, uh, our line really stepped up, on, even tight ends did too. I know that uh, you know Harding this week. You know we've talked about it now for two segments. They're they're a complex defense. Those guys are super disciplined. Do you enjoy having that challenge of playing against a team that's as well thought of as they are? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, it's it's going to be a tough one this week. Uh, they got a big six six D in that uh, real long. I'm not the biggest guy at tight end, but it's uh, got you written all over it though, doesn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I'm ready for ready for the challenge. You know, coaches have talked about how, you know, not only uh, have you worked hard this season and you've improved your run blocking, but, but how much you help those younger guys that are coming up. But I know that you know, there's been some shuffling, Phil Baker out now, and so Aaron Jeffries is going to come in. How much pride do you take in not only working on your own game, but making sure that those young guys are where they need to be and making sure they improve? Man, I take a lot of pride in it. Uh, they look up to me. Even got the true freshmen in right now. They call me all the time like, hey, you know, what do I do on this play? You know, what, what do you, you got some, got some uh, advice on this play? I, I enjoy it. They call me all the time I'm like, hey, just relax. It's not high school football no more. It's, it's college. Everybody's good. You just got to be good at what you do. I mean, I enjoy it a lot. Uh, I take a lot of pride in it. Going through the last few games, and I don't mean to be bleak, but the last few games of your career, I guess, here at Swasu, uh, the biggest thing that you personally – you know, either want to get accomplished or something you want to improve on over the last few weeks. Kind of take us through like your mindset going into your last few games. Oh, it's tough. Uh, That's what I'm I'll, here for. <laughs> tough questions. I don't know. Uh, I want to get involved in the pass game. I've, I've, I haven't really talked to Coach Poe about it, but I'd like to be a receiving tight end. I want, I want to see what, what happens if they get the ball in my hands. I feel like we haven't done much with the tight ends this, this year, but uh, I think I have the most catches I've had in my career at tight end this season, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, but it's 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 sad coming to the ending. But I'm ready for it to be kind of over. But we'll see. We'll see. A, where it's a weird feeling when you get to the end. It You're is like, a weird okay, feeling. I'm, I'm sad that this is over. But uh, I've kind of you know my weeks have been gone yeah. every single fall. So it'll be yeah. nice to have a Tuesday off at Fifth one point. Fifth year, man. It's 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 rough on your body sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a grind. Alex Ramirez here with us on the Swansuit Coaches Show. Bulldogs take on Harding Saturday afternoon. Alex, thanks for coming on, buddy. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Talk with Edwin Deadweiler coming up next here on the Swasu Coaches Show. On the corner of Custer and Main Street in Weatherford, More Than Medicine stands ready to fill your prescriptions in a fast, friendly, and professional way. They also offer an outstanding selection of gifts for people of all ages. Their Gold Crown Hallmark card selection is second to none, and More Than Medicine is the perfect place for a bridal registry. All this, that's why it's called More Than Medicine. Corner of Main and Custer in Weatherford. They're on call for you 24 hours a day. The weather in western Oklahoma is unpredictable. When you need help, folks have been counting on the expertise of A-plus roofing and construction. Owned and operated by Damon Schultz, a GAF certified contractor. Fully insured with an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. A-plus roofing always offers free estimates. Call today, 580-772-7587. That's 772-7587. Here before and after the storm. A-plus roofing and construction in Weatherford. Convenient Care got just even more convenient. Weatherford Convenient Care has moved locations. You can now get that convenient one-on-one -on -one personal care at the Weatherford Regional Hospital. Just enter the far west entrance, labeled Main Entrance, and they will get you checked in and on your way to fast, convenient, one-of-a-kind care. Or skip the wait and check in online at weatherfordhospital.com. Weatherford Convenient Care, now located inside the Weatherford Regional Hospital at 3701 West Main. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. ASAP General Stores have seven Western Oklahoma locations conveniently located in Weatherford, Clinton, Hinton, and Thomas. At ASAP General Stores, you will always find a clean and friendly atmosphere. Hello. Fresh, hot food. Delicious. As well as gas and diesel. Use your kickback card and get rewarded for all your purchases from a store you can trust. ASAP General Stores. Stop by any of the seven Western Oklahoma locations in Weatherford, Clinton, Hinton, and Thomas. So, what are you waiting for? Get there ASAP. Here's Jay and Angie Wyatt, owners of Anadarko Dozer and Trucking. We think the cream of the crop is, is all that we are. It shows not only our safety records, the reports we get from the customers. Even if we don't have a position to fill, if the right applicant walks in the door, we will take the time, we will visit with them, and, and it may be a situation where we weren't looking for that person, but when they walked in the door, you know, they're the right person for us. Apply now at Anadarko Dozer and Trucking on South Main in Elk City or in Hinton, three miles south on 281. 
Well, welcome back to Lucille's Roadhouse here in Weatherford. This is the Swasu Coaches Show. And let me get the title right. We've got Assistant Athletic Director now. Edwin Detweiler, Assistant Athletic Director for Sports Medicine. Edwin, thanks for coming on. Appreciate Thank you. it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're one of the top four most important guys on campus. You keep the athletes uh, healthy as, as, as best you can, even though you know they play violent sports. But uh, um, I guess a rundown, I'm not sure a whole lot of people know, a rundown of, of what you manage, your staff, and, 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 and the things that you do not at practice and at games to help out the teams. Yeah, what we see a lot of times is what general people see is us on the sidelines hopefully not doing a whole lot because when we're – when we're bored on the sidelines, that's a good thing. But, it, you know, there's a lot behind the scenes that we end up doing, doing treatments in the mornings, getting people ready for practices and games and things like that. Um, we have a staff there. We have um, two full-time assistants, plus we have a part-time assistant as well, and then we have three GAs that are certified athletic trainers. So we have a staff of seven right now, and that's really helpful as we continue to grow our sports and things like that. And that keeps us, allows us to really take care of the different sports, do the rehabs, take care of treatment and things like that. And it just seems like the more our staff grows, the busier we get. You thought yeah. it would give us more freedom, but I think athletes get used to coming in and we stay really busy taking care of the treatments and things like that. Going into year number 10 here at Swasu, you know, go back, I guess, to when you, you, you first got into being an employee at, at a school and getting into, you know, athletic training at the collegiate right. level. What drew you to that? Well, originally I started out as a physical therapy assistant. So I was working in a sports medicine clinic doing rehab on a lot of different athletes. And it was really nice. I enjoyed the setting I was at, but I'd see them after surgery, do rehab for several weeks, a month, and then didn't see them. And then I went back and got my athletic training certification. And I had an opportunity to go to North Greenville University there in South Carolina. And I took their athletic training job there and really enjoyed that. It got to the point where you got to know the athletes from the time before they got injured to the time they got injured, do their rehab, and then see them back doing what they loved. And just really to build a relationship with college athletes was a lot of fun. So I was there for six years at North Greenville. Then I had the opportunity to come back here. My wife is from this area, so came back here in 2010, and it's been here since. I was going to ask you what kept you here, but that might be it. The wife doesn't <laughs> want to leave too far from home. It worked out well, that, yes. That makes sense. Um, one thing that I, that, that I thought was cool was uh, you got to go a couple times to be part of the Olympic Training Center. got to go to Colorado Springs where uh, all that stuff is headquartered uh, right. this spring. How, I, how eye-opening, how much fun was that for you to see, you know, the highest of the high-level athletes and, and what they do to take care of themselves? You know, that was always a dream of mine to work with some Olympic athletes and continue to stay involved with that a little bit. And hopefully I have the opportunity to maybe travel with some of the teams down the road. Um, it's a process. You have to have so many years of experience before you can apply to do that. And once you go through, you do an application process and get to go work for two weeks with them at a train center. And I'd, I've had the opportunity to go to San Diego and do their facility out there. And then this past year, I was out there in Colorado Springs. And it really is. It's a unique opportunity working with some of the top athletes. And what was really amazing is these athletes, they are dedicated. They're there, you know, all day training. And they are, they're just as excited to be there as well. It's mm -hmm. a dream of theirs to come true as well. But, yeah, they, you have a lot of different professions from physical therapists to chiropractors to athletic trainers to strength and conditioning coaches all working together to really help these athletes get to their best. And it's really a great opportunity. Did you learn anything while you were there? Some, some, some things that maybe those people do that you're like, okay, that's, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I think one thing. You know, as athlete trainers, you always hear about in the training room doing electrical stem, ice, mo the modalities. You know, the training center there in, in Colorado Springs uses very little of that. They do a lot of the hands-on manual therapy and really have a lot of, done a lot more of that. And since then, you know, cupping techniques, dry needling, and those are things that I went and took courses on this summer. And we started to implement that a lot more in our training room as well. Just some new techniques that beyond just the feel-good stuff that really I think we've seen some good results with the recovery that we've gotten with our athletes. Yeah, cupping's the Michael Phelps thing that he yes. was doing in the Olympics, if you don't know what that was. Yes. Um, you know, going forward, what's on the horizon? I asked Coach Thurman this, I think, last week about, you know, new buildings and stuff like that. So I assume, you know, underwater treadmill, personal personal sauna for you, obviously, on of the course. on the, uh, on the the order sheet. But, no, what's uh, what's next for you guys? Well, we – we got a real, you know, the new training room had we've been in now for about four or five years has really given us the opportunity to expand and have more space. We'd like to upgrade some of our equipment, some of the equipment we've had for quite a while now. I think what's in the future is we're really trying to gauge it um, as the athletic training department. All athletic trainers are moving to a master's level degree, so that will that's going to do away with some of our graduate assistants that help us out. So we're trying to figure out how we're going to manage without graduate assistance and do we have the budget to hire full-time staff and things like that. So that's kind of a little bit scary. The future is that. I mean, it's a great thing that we're advancing the athletic training field to master's level, but it also 
is going to maybe limit our staff a little bit as well. So we're trying to figure that out as far as personnel. And then we'd like to continue to, like I said, equipment, the whirlpools are something I really like to update. They're getting old. I'd like to get something that has more of a filtration system that we can manage and hopefully we don't have as much, you know, have to clean them quite as well without, you know, it's a little bit cleaner and things like that. All right, put that on the list, whoever's listening out there that's got the purchasing power. Edwin Detweiler with us here on the Swassuit Coaches Show. Uh, how about that ride in two weeks ago? We got to take Dog Force 1 to, uh, to Magnolia. That, that was, was the way to travel right there. I don't know why we don't do that all the time. <laughs> we need to, we, yes. We'll just we'll hop on the plane and go home from here. That was that was great. That was great stuff. Edwin, thanks for coming on. Appreciate Thank it. you. We'll talk some Swassuit soccer coming up next here on the Swassuit Coaches Show. There's a new energy in Oklahoma, wind and natural gas, working together, keeping your energy prices steady and affordable. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. There's a new energy in Oklahoma, wind and natural gas, working together, creating jobs and more money for communities and schools. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. time you looked at your cellular bill. No, I mean really looked at your cellular bill. Pioneer has introduced new plans that will help you find the savings on cellular service so you don't pay more than you should. How about this? Pioneer's new family plans offer unbeatable prices on the area's most reliable cellular network. For example, now get three lines with 20 gigabytes of data for just $90 per month. Wow. Stop by a Pioneer store or call us at 1-800-641-2732 to find the savings. Need your oil and filter changed? Take your vehicle to CJ Southwest Tire in Weatherford. There is no appointment needed. Bring your car, truck, or diesel in today. You can wait in the comfort of their smoke-free lounge while experienced technicians change your oil and filter on your vehicle. CJ Southwest Tire on the corner of Maine and Kansas in Weatherford. Your Bridgestone and Firestone dealer. CJ Southwest Tire. See them on Facebook and at cjsouthwesttire.com. Hey, Bill, hey. Gary. Catch the game last night? Of course. Yeah, and that diving one-handed one catch. catch. So impressive. <laughs> if you think that's impressive, you should see my azaleas. Wait, did you just bring up flowers during a football conversation? <clears throat> McRib is back. It's back? Sweet, the McRib is back. It sure is. More saucy goodness to love. From your host, the Phillips family, at McDonald's in Weatherford, Clinton, and South Main in Elk City. We're back here at Lucille's Roadhouse in Weatherford on the Swasu Coaches Show. We turn our attention now to soccer, and we've got head coach Mark Pearson with us. Coach, thanks for coming. Appreciate thanks. it. Thanks for having me. Uh, I guess let's go back to last week. Boy, you, you beat the teeth out of Harding 6 <laughs> nothing. Uh, a couple hat tricks that you guys had. You beat Washita 1-0. I got to watch. Uh, I, I showed up, now. Well, I guess 40-something minutes into the match, and by then you guys had already scored a few, and it was over at that mm-hmm. point. But uh, two things that stuck out to me, and I want to get your thoughts on them high pressure super high pressure uh, Harding couldn't breathe for the most part and and the thing that stuck out to me was just how connected the game was from from the back line to the to the midfield and into the attacking third how pleased were you with how you guys played in that game yeah no I think I think it was a really good game for our young players um, you know a lot of it's about matchups in, in any sport um, but you know for us against Harding I felt like their defenders were a little bit suspect and so we came in planning on putting a lot of pressure on them um, trying to win the ball higher on the field, but you know I felt like our defenders really came into the play well. Um, our outside backs played exceptionally well that game, um, and then again I think our movement uh, and rhythm of play was was really really good. Of course, um, you know again the, the way we played really allowed us to get at them quickly. <laughs> And then, of course, if you score, you get on the front foot. It helps a lot. Yeah. So for young players, that confidence was was really good for them. Going into that game, you know, you mentioned how how you know you thought you could take advantage of Harding with some high pressure. Is that something that's just matchup based, or, or or are you guys a team that maybe not default to that high of pressure, but you still want to get people on their back foot early? Yeah. Well, 
again, I think matchups is a part of it, but that is that is something that we can do with this group of girls. Um, we're, we're pretty athletic. They read the game pretty well for, for young players. And so, you know, our philosophy has really been trying to win the ball higher on the field. That way we don't have to build out of the back quite as much. Um, and so I, I think it is about mashups, but it really does play to, to the, the talent that we have this year. Last time we talked, you were about to head to California. Uh, you guys have been on the road a lot this year, and you had a lot of new faces as well. Uh, biggest improvement since the last time you were here that you've seen? Has the game just seemingly gotten easier for all those new faces with just matches played? I think that's a part of it. You know, again, I think at, 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 in any sport, the, the, the change from high school to college, university level, the speed of play is sometimes, um, you know, surprises kids. And so that, you know, getting eight, ten games under your belt, that, that helps. Um, and to be fair to the girls, you know, a lot of what we planned for, really a lot of the work that we did in the preseason and in the first couple weeks of season, in terms of our system of play, we kind of had to scrap. Yeah. You know, we've picked up some injuries, some ACL injuries that have taken some kids out, um, trying to find the right right system. And so really we're playing differently. And I think going to California, we had to make some changes. Now coming back, they've started to kind of, you know, understand how we're wanting them to play now. And uh, and so they're starting to, to, to kind of catch on to that. And, and I think that's helping them to play better. You know, I, I mentioned what, you know, against Harding, how, how connected the game was, you know, the, the, the run of play, building from the back. And I think with Sandra up front, one of the best goal scorers you'll find in America, it'd, it'd be so easy for teams to just default to sending it over the top and, and letting her run onto it. How much of a focus is that aspect of the game and making sure you guys do get your midfielders involved and making sure your forwards do come back to the ball? Right. Well, you know, teams teams play us differently this year too than last year. I mean, we were fairly direct last year. We had uh, Alima who had speed to get in behind. You know, Sandra's a very good player. She's quick, but she's not a player that wants a ball over the top to yeah. chase down. Um, you know, Brenna is is a strong back-to-goal type player that plays for us. Um, and so we're, we're not playing quite over the top that way. But, um, you know, we're trying to take what the defense gives us. And if we can find our forwards early, that's where we're looking to go. And then our midfielders are really coming in support. And our, our forwards are starting to understand how to bring those midfielders into the play running off them and supporting runs and I felt like against against Harding we really were able to find that we were able to switch the point of attack we were able to get a little bit of a rhythm and so that was that was uh, good for the girls again our success um, is really uh, offensively anyways is going to be based on the chemistry of those players in the attack you know our two strikers and then our, our three really attacking midfield players that are supporting them so um, we, we've made good progress and again all those girls that we have in those positions their mentality really fits that style so uh, uh, I think it's been good. Washita you get a, a late goal you win that one one nil and I know that you know uh, even if you hadn't gotten the result there, to, to, to at least get a goal late in the game in a tight one, it, I know that that's something that you maybe guys haven't had a whole lot this year. How important was that for just to go through that? I know the win is, is great, yeah. but just to go through that. Well, you know, every experience we've had this year has been great for our, our young players and, and our new players too. So whether it's an overtime game, whether it's, a, you know, a top team that we're playing, we're playing on the road, traveling to California, all those things are going to be experiences that they're going to be able to kind of stack on each other to build and, 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 and get better. Um, you know, probably the goal that we scored was one of our most difficult goals out of the opportunities that we had in that game. Yeah. And I really felt like, um, you know, we were creating enough offensively that a goal was going to come, you know, 85th minute or whatever it was. It's kind of late in the game. But uh, we really did create other really good opportunities. We could have had three or four more goals in that game. You know, the Harding game, we won 6-0, but honestly could have been 10. Yeah, uh, Just because we created good opportunities. So... Uh, you know, it, again, it was a game that I felt like we were we were playing well. Um, I felt at some point we were going to find that goal. I was glad we didn't have to go to overtime. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness, we've uh, already done that this yeah. year. Yeah, um, being the second game of, of the week, that's that's kind of good. But uh, you know, again, our goals are coming from different players too. You know, 
Um, last year, again, Sandra scored a lot, Ali scored a lot, so we had a couple of players that really scored a lot of goals for us. But you know, our our goals are really coming from a lot of different different places uh, and different players, which is which is really good for us. Uh, I think it makes it a little bit more difficult for players to to scheme and game plan for us as well. You've got one of the toughest games in the conference, one of the biggest games in the conference coming up tomorrow. You're in Shawnee to take on Oklahoma Baptist, and you know I won't rehash what happened last year in the tournament, but mm -hmm. uh, you, you guys have met up in the postseason the last couple of years, so. Um, this is obviously an important game. What about them makes them so difficult to beat? Uh, well, they've got a lot of players that have played, you know, four years for them. They've got seniors. Um, their their style of play, their formation. They play a four four two with a box in the middle. They play their strikers out wide. Um, it, it's a system that you just don't see see hardly at all. And That's the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. It's close to it. But they they entice you to play through the middle. You know, if you're playing. If you're a team that likes possession mm -hmm. and you're trying to play through those midfielders, they just want you to play that style so they can they can you know jump on you and, and win the ball early and get at you. So uh, again, we've we it really fits into our style of play though, like how we're looking to play and where we're looking to play. I think uh, we've got some good opportunities. I think our girls we've 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 prepared them for for this game and and what they're going to see um, at Oklahoma Baptist. And again, I feel good. I mean. Um, at the end of the day, they have to execute the game plan. Um, but I think uh, I think they're they're well prepared. I'm really excited to see how they can do, and I think we match up really well against them. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens in the game. You talk about your outside backs and how well they played against Harding and a team like Oklahoma Baptist with the formation they play and the way that they play their midfielders. It would seem like you guys might have a chance to send those outside backs forward and get them in on the attack. Yeah. So like their their wing plays, you know, they're. Uh, the conference player of the year, Ruthie, plays on the right wing for them. She's very fast, and so I think they count on a lot of teams just to get pinned back with her there. But really, when they play that way, we can get our outside backs forward. Um, we can play into those open areas in, in the outside. And so that'll be something that we'll look to do when, when the play is on. We'll be able to get those players into the attack. And, you know, our outside backs coming forward are, are good on the ball. And so uh, they can make good decisions from there and find our forwards and, and – uh, and, and hopefully that'll be something that we can use. Also should mention you guys were able to sweep the uh, Conference Player of the Week awards last week, which is something that doesn't happen uh, super often. Big game tomorrow. We're going to talk to Brenny here in a second, but I guess uh, if you can talk about her a little bit and, uh, and the progress that she's made in her freshman year. Yeah. Well, again, we're using so many freshmen. There's Lots there's a lot of them that are, that are doing well for us. Um, you know, Brenna's been very consistent for us. Um, she's, she's working hard in training. Um, she's working hard in the games consistently. I mean, she's a, a good, strong athlete. She strikes the ball very well with both feet. Um, and so she just creates a lot of uh, difficulties for matchups with the other team. And so I think the biggest thing with Bren has just been her consistency and her work, her work ethic. And those two things, uh, along with the skill level that she has, is going to create opportunities for her to score and, and find other players. So, um, you know, again... The freshman year, like I always say, like they're going to look really good sometimes, and then they're going to look like <laughs> like, <laughs> <maybe> freshmen. <laughs> like freshmen. Um, but again, I, I feel like Brenna has really consistently been been one of our best freshmen in terms of her consistency in the play and her decision making and her effort. And so those things will take you a long way. She's good on the field. See how she is with the headset yeah. on. Yeah, we'll okay. find out. We'll find out quick. <laughs> Coach Pearson, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Big game tomorrow as uh, the Lady Dogs take on Oklahoma Baptist rematch of last year's conference tournament championship game. Well, Brennan, when we come back on the Swasu Coaches Show. When it's time to unwind, pick up a bottle of your favorite stuff at Butcher's Wine and Spirits in Weatherford. All the top brands at the absolute best price. From whiskey, bourbon, gin, and scotch to your favorite craft, import, or domestic beer, Butcher's has you covered. And when it comes to wine, Butcher's has the best selection in town. And don't forget to check out their sale rack with deep discounts. Butcher's Wine and Spirits on Main in Weatherford. Bank First is loyal to the same spirit of industry and ingenuity seen across decades of life in Weatherford. Still a proud stop on Route 66, the vibrant modern reality has the loyalty of local people who run this Bank First, where a rising powerhouse of wind energy joins a renewable source of brain power at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. Families and CK Energy Electric Cooperative, it's the ideal partnership. 
CK Energy makes every customer an owner of the business. Unlike other electric utilities, CK Energy exists to make sure your needs are always met, not to make a profit. We are locally owned and operated, and we are always there with you, reinvesting in your community. That's why in an electric co-op, the people have the power. Owned by our communities, committed to our members. CK is your energy. On the corner of Custer and Main Street in Weatherford, More Than Medicine stands ready to fill your prescriptions in a fast, friendly, and professional way. They also offer an outstanding selection of gifts for people of all ages. Their Gold Crown Hallmark card selection is second to none, and More Than Medicine is the perfect place for a bridal registry. All this, that's why it's called More Than Medicine. Corner of Main and Custer in Weatherford. They're on call for you 24 hours a day. The weather in western Oklahoma is unpredictable. When you need help, folks have been counting on the expertise of A-plus roofing and construction. Owned and operated by Damon Schultz, a GAF certified contractor. Fully insured with an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. A-plus roofing always offers free estimates. Call today, 580-772-7587. That's 772-7587. Here before and after the storm. A-plus roofing and construction in Weatherford. Convenient Care got just even more convenient. Weatherford Convenient Care has moved locations. You can now get that convenient one-on-one -on -one personal care at the Weatherford Regional Hospital. Just enter the far west entrance, labeled Main Entrance, and they will get you checked in and on your way to fast, convenient, one-of-a-kind care. Or skip the wait and check in online at weatherfordhospital.com. Weatherford Convenient Care, now located inside the Weatherford Regional Hospital at 3701 West Main. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Welcome back one final time to the Swansu Coaches Show. Continuing our conversation about Swansu Soccer, we've got freshman Brendan McGurk, who's not nervous one bit, right? <laughs> no. Not at all. All right, good deal. Um, boy, coming into to your freshman year, uh, you know, even Coach talked about it a little bit, uh, how different the game is and, and, and how much of a transition it can be. What's the biggest difference that you've seen from playing high school ball to club ball to now playing at the collegiate level? Um, probably just the pace. It's a lot faster. Like the first um – practice we had I noticed the pace is a lot faster than club and high school was it hard to transition into that or was it just just something that just took time it took time and it was definitely hard at first but I've gotten used to it and I think we all play really well together now you talk about playing well together you know even coaches mentioned this about how many new faces there are coupled with returners was it was it difficult to kind of all mesh together since you all don't necessarily know what each other's going to do out there I guess, how much easier has it gotten from game one to now, now that you kind of are all on the same page? Yeah, game one was, uh, well, compared to now, it was definitely tough at first, but I think we finally started to click, and I think we play really well now together. Last week, you get a you get a hat trick, which is always yeah. nice against Harding. Um, what were your feelings after that game? Was, was that something that, you know, when you finally have that first big game in college, it seems like there's a weight off your shoulders. Did you kind of feel mm -hmm. that way where finally I was able to put a couple goals in? Yeah, a little bit. I was nervous that I wasn't going to be able to get that. But now that it finally happened, not as nervous, but I still want to perform better and, you and keep going. You and Sandra obviously are able to, able to combine for those six goals. Playing with her and how good she is and, and how much attention – that defenses give her that open things up for you do, do you do you see that on the field or is that something that you don't really notice yeah Sandra's a really good player and I definitely look up to her just because of all of her goals and her assists so I look up to her what, what what do you take from her like when you watch her practice or when you watch her in games are there things about her game that you look at and you say okay if I can get better at this that would make me a better player in the long run what are some of those things that you look at um her work ethic she's uh, she's fast. She has a good shot. Her touch is really good. She's just an all-around really good player. Now that you've gotten you know, to, to be a part of the team, now you get to play Oklahoma Baptist on the road, which is obviously a big game. And I know, you know not being here, it's kind of hard maybe to get some context for it, but that's obviously a huge game tomorrow. What's, mm -hmm. what's this week of practice been like? Have there been good practices? Is everybody ready to go for that one? Yeah, we've been practicing a lot of our corners and defending corners and just our attack and um, playing balls through to the forwards and just like the tactical parts of soccer. So. 
going forward in, in your game specifically for the rest of the year, uh, do you have goals that you've set for yourself individually? Uh, what are some expectations that you have for the rest of, of your season? As a team, we set a goal of working hard each practice and then making it to the national tournament and winning the national tournament. And I believe we can do it. That's one of my goals as well. All right, Brennan McGurk with us. Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad was this? Seriously. It, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I tried to say it like the thousand times. It's yeah. not that bad, is it? No. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it, even Thank though you're nervous. Thank me. you. That's going to do it for us here on this edition of the Swansu Coaches Show. We'll come back next week to Lucille's. Uh, but, again, Swansu football is on the road at Harding. We'll have that one on Coyote Classic Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock kick, 2 o'clock pregame. Thanks to all of our guests once again, to Jacob, our video producer this evening. We'll see you back here next Wednesday for the Swansu Coaches Show.